welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt, and this is the fourth segment. We're going to talk about legacy because Marquardt Law Firm focuses on last wills, living trusts, and tax-protected inheritance plans. And now, it's time for the Talk Law Radio Legacy Spotlight. What's your legacy? Sponsored by Marquardt Law Firm. Before we talk about legacy, I do want to talk about hot Cheetos. So go ahead, ask your question, Shannon. (laughs) Well, you were talking so eloquently and so professionally, all these big words. You're obviously super intelligent and educated. I have to confess that my brain was on hot Cheetos. <laughs> Don't worry. I also, I, also, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm from Laredo. So it's down like hot earth. Cheetos are, are like, it's like gold basically. Right. It's like a currency. So is it true? <laughs> is, I agree. I concur. The it, question is, is there a shortage of hot Cheetos in Mexico? Well, I think there's different hot Cheetos that are made in Mexico and perhaps the recipe that we have have here that's, you know, FDA approved or whatever, it might be better by general consensus. Oh, well, you know, that very well could be. I, um, I agree. That's my personal opinion. Because that's one in, opinion I'll put on air. Okay. The, the in, American hot cheetos. In Europe, the they okay. have different cigarettes. Yeah. And and so when I was traveling with uh, St. Mary's over in Austria. I cannot even imagine you smoking, Todd. Like, I, well, my s- <laughs> brain does not have a space for that. <laughs> I'll just let you know that the cigarettes there We're ruining are your day off. <laughs> than they are here. Um, so Pepsi is also a thing in Mexico. Yes. My mom yes. would buy the, the the Pepsi that was from Mexico because she she wanted something with real sugar and not corn syrup. Mm-hmm. And so that maybe that's uh, is that true? Do you know? How they make Pepsi. But there's a rumor. <laughs> there's, I can't give the recipe away on air, but. <laughs> <laughs> there's a rumor that the Coke, I mean, I I will pay more for Coke. <laughs> a cola. Which kind? <laughs> Coca-Cola. <laughs> if I think it's from Mexico, like the bottle, the glass bottle. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's a rumor that it's not really from Mexico. So I've been defrauded all, all this time. Well, it goes back to that whole or- country of origin. Yeah. And Mexican Coke became like a hipster, like oh, a yes. white hipster oh, yes. thing. Yeah, it, it's like, big. It's like people at restaurants, yeah. you know, like $12 tacos, you know, a taco right, shop right, right. selling $12 tacos. They're like, oh, you know, I want a Mexican Coke. And it was like this mm-hmm. distinction. But when yes. you go to... Uh, Europe, you're not like, can I have an Italian Pepsi? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So that that's funny. I imagine that, you know, the recipe in Mexico, Coca-Cola is one company. So whatever recipe they're using in Mexico, I, I don't know because I don't, I don't know what their supply chain looks like, but I imagine that. Um, well, you need to get into that. Great. Yeah. Well, if anyone from Coca-Cola is interested in um, that, that uh, portion, you know, I'm happy to examine it. For but them. you've tasted both hot Cheetos from here and there. Yes. Well, I like them so much that I would eat either one, but uh-huh. the, the American ones are, they have a certain thing. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and you heard it here. Yeah. Shannon and I are trying to get the guy that invented hot Cheetos on the show. Allegedly. That would be great. Invented. Because, well, <laughs> well, Eva, Eva Longoria said that he, she made a, didn't she make a documentary about him or she tried to or something Oh, we like need that. to find that too. Yeah. There, yeah my it's pop, a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm, it's a movie. Yeah. So, you know, there's, okay. a, it's a great story I've, I've heard. Well, maybe that's why he hasn't returned my LinkedIn message because he's <laughs> so popular because of his movie. He no. was at dinner at Eva Langoria's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Shannon, do, like, I think it's funny that we're talking about the border and other places like hot Cheetos yeah. on the board. I mean, it's like the number one. I mean, it's like you get papers and like they have the red fingerprints on them, you know, like oh, people at sure. schools and office. Mm-hmm. But like in other places, people are like, oh, these are really spicy or like I'm a, I'm afraid. 
afraid of these. I was at Ingram Park Mall. I saw a lady feeding hot Cheetos with cheese to her baby, like a tiny baby. It could it couldn't <laughs> start the baby them young. Couldn't walk. Yeah. <laughs> well, in New Mexico, we have hot green chili there, and and oh yeah, same thing. I mean, babies will eat green chili. Yeah, it's you kind of get them into the. It's a go-to. Hot Cheetos with cheese is definitely like the number one concession stand item on the Did border. Did you know I invented that? I'm I'm currently in litigation against really? uh, every taco, taqueria in town. That because you were the every, first one to I, put I'm the first one to on combine it. nacho cheese with a hot Cheeto they, in 1980. <laughs> they, all these people, you know, working these little, you know, operations. That, yeah. That, you know, you need a piece of that. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, seriously, let's uh, talk about your legacy. Um, what do you want people to remember you by? Uh, do you have anything special that you've inherited or some value that you've learned from uh, an older person that you want to talk about? Yeah, I think in terms of legacy, I don't think of things like assets or money. I, I see things more like what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, our duty and what we can build and leave behind for other people to understand frameworks, creating intellectual property that has never existed before your knowledge. Um, I hope I can do that in, in the context of trade, but also, you know, for the community, for uh, foreign relations with the United States. I think uh, through business, you can, you can do that much like, you know, you guys as lawyers uh, engage with your community every day in, in specific contexts. Todd, I know you focus a lot on people that you know, families and, and people that own businesses. And Shannon, I think- And you take your time, you're not in a rush. Like that's one of his really good qualities. Absolutely. I love the way he's just so methodical in the way he approaches helping people. Absolutely. But, and you said civic spark, and I had yes. never heard that before. I don't yes. know if you invented that in your brain, but I, I love it. No, I wish, I, I felt the civic spark and I'm glad that I learned about it. I was. Um, watching a conversation between Justices Sotomayor and uh, Justice Coney Barrett. And um, the venue that they were at was talking about a, a civic spark. And it, that's this feeling or this urge that you get to engage with your community outside of what you do to make a living, outside of right. maybe your own you know, existence online or whatever. And I thought that yeah, was fascinating. Yeah, I love it. Love I started it. to feel that too um, because... It's it's like the hier hierarchy of needs Absolutely. by the the psychologist like Maslow, that. Yeah. right? And so you get to the top when your bills are paid, yeah. and you think, well, now what do mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but not what I do. Like I'm bored, but like that obligation that if people that were raised a certain way, your family instilled in you, you're here to help. You're here to leave this place better than you found it, Absolutely. and it's that drive. Absolutely. To and give that, back. And I think another interesting another interesting way to look at it is when you get to the top, you know, at the bottom rungs of that hierarchy, there's other people there with you and they're figuring it out. But once True. you reach the top of whatever it may be, whether it's financial success, business success, um, if you're a museum director, you know, that has made it to the top, you know, you now have the opportunity to have a blank canvas and you know what do you do with that blank canvas do you just donate money do you go volunteer your time or do you go build something else that's never existed before? i've heard it called space or margin yes. yeah yes. I, I couldn't agree more yeah there's a higher margin there so shannon tell us something about legacy in your life what do you want people to remember you by or what lessons have you learned from those that have gone before you I um, would really love for people to say that I treated people well. That would be, that's one of the biggest compliments I ever get. And just how you treat people for some reason, my life experience and all the mistakes I've made and, you know, probably still am currently making because I'm a human person, but the way you treat people at the end of the day, because I, I was just telling my son a story about a guy who treated me poorly 40 years ago. And mm -hmm. I remember it. It's how you make somebody feel. Absolutely. You know, you can right. have fancy awards on the wall and do all this stuff, but how 
I made you feel when I interacted. I'm, gl I'm glad that that's your passion because I, I forget to do that. <laughs> I don't think you do. I do not think you do. You. I, I just get so busy. I'm already thinking about something else. And, and so I, I feel bad when I should have smiled. But or... you take your time with people. You know, you, you're... Sometimes I do. <laughs> I, I think you, you help people see areas that they might not see in the black and white and that takes time it's mm -hmm. not an overnight thing thank you yeah exactly treating people well i mean i i couldn't agree more i mean i think that then translates into your legal practice as i think it translates into my business practice and also being being on the border we see people you know i see people in crisis all the time you know a, a woman mm -hmm. that's made the journey there with her child you know and I, I, want, I have nothing Ugh. but empathy for her. And then you see- We could see, talk for hours. Yeah, I, I know we could. That's a whole other you know, <laughs> show. But I think that, that that translates into you know the adaptability component we were talking about earlier and also your legacy of wanting to treat people right. It's an understanding. Um, understanding. Beyond anything, right? Yeah. People and, do want to be understood. Yeah. And we have a lot of common humanity, but our modern culture is really- separating us someone said something i loved the illusion of of connect of of unity mm -hmm. social media gives us this illusion mm -hmm. that you know okay we're texting mm -hmm. we're i just messaged you on instagram mm -hmm. and it's all an illusion like mm -hmm. connection is is kind of being lost in our society yeah i think you know referring to that point you have a lot of people who make judgments and create feedback based off of what they see on social media which could be simply an illusion a lot of people use it for business and for for things but you know it's like why don't you just call that person and ask how they're doing uh what they're up to you know if you're if you really care true. why do you just rely on something that you know we don't know if it's real or not yeah true 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 phone call mm -hmm. yeah well you see a lot of kids nowadays sitting together each one looking at their phone yeah it's a i don't know how we're gonna get past that because if i throw my phone out the window which i want to almost every <laughs> single day um i'm not you know I, i'll go broke i mean i i i might find my way but you know i need to be talking to people i don't know how to get past it either but i'm convinced it's part of the answer because i i asked somebody much smarter than me um what do we do about homelessness, for example? Like mm -hmm. just one of the big problems mm -hmm. we're facing people that are unhoused. Mm -hmm. Well, we used to have such a small community that that guy in the village, mm -hmm. you know, you would take him some soup. He would mm -hmm. probably sleep out in the shed, you know, like right. he was, we didn't have the, these problems because we were a unit. We were, communi we were community and we took care of each other. Mm -hmm. It was more localized. Yes, maybe. exactly. Yeah. I like the way you speak. Thank you. Yeah, Just well, go ahead and say everything I'm trying to say. You say it better. No, Jen, and I, I, I think you just have so much going on. The work you do is so important. And I think that, you know, uh, we need to continue to do things like this. Todd, thank you for having us today. And thank yeah, you, Shannon, Todd, for you're, joining me you're because good to do this. it was awesome to have another border person I hope we get here. to talk more. We yeah, will. I'm, I'm thrilled that we had so much to talk about. We didn't get to everything that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh, darn. What did we miss? I, I hijacked it, didn't I? Well, there's I? just so much law involved in trade. Yeah. And, so much. And so we'll have to have and you And trucking freight back. is fascinating. Yes, yeah. we didn't even get to talk well, about I, that. I was going to riff off of what you said. Like, it, people are like truckers. I'm like, they're kind of the heartbeat of a lot right, of things. Right, right. True. So we'll have you True. come back. But for now, we have to say goodbye. Oh, Bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank have a you. great day. This has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at marquardtlawfirm.com. And be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio show Saturday mornings at 11 on 930 AM, The Answer. Each week, attorney Todd Marquardt talks about the law. His mission with the Talk Law radio show and podcast is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. In the beginning, God had one law. Don't eat from the fruit of that tree. Then came the Ten Commandments. Now we have federal, state, and municipal lawmakers that won't stop creating new laws. Laws that might impact you without you knowing it. Listen to the show and drop a line on Facebook or email host at talklawradio.com and let the host know what you think of the show, the topics you want to hear, and whether you want to be a guest.